Here we are at example 6 from our 1.4 set of notes. We're asked to determine where f is in fact continuous for this function. Uh, so just looking at this function, we see that we have x squared, much like we had with our definition. Uh, we saw that x squared was in fact continuous itself. Uh, this number 4 is kind of like that same, same idea with the number 6. Uh, but it is a constant that is in fact continuous everywhere. And we are actually subtracting between these two. But according to our definition, as long as that first piece was continuous, the second piece was continuous, you can also use subtraction for that. So then as a result, this entire x squared minus 4 would also by default be uh, continuous. Kind of just to quickly draw a rough sketch of this graph, you'd have a quadratic that was shifted down 4 units. And you can see that it is still in fact continuous everywhere when you combine the two ideas, or two functions. Likewise on the bottom, we see that this is continuous everywhere, this is continuous everywhere, this is continuous everywhere. The combination then of everything would also by default be continuous everywhere because we are subtracting. Likewise, we have a division bar. Um, and as a result, this function would work with division as well, as long as that bottom is not equal to zero. So our goal here is to figure out for what a values would make this discontinuous because this will work as long as that bottom is not as long as that bottom is not equal to zero. So again we're actually trying to look for pretty much like our vertical asymptotes and holes to see where are we not equaling zero. So then we have x squared minus x minus six is not equal to zero. Factoring this we end up with x minus three times x plus 2 is not equal to 0. Now using that 0 product property, you can break these up. End up with x minus 3 is not equal to 0, and this x plus 2 is not equal to 0, and then simply just solving for each one. So it looks like it just comes out to be x is not equal to 3, and x is not equal to uh, negative 2. Now, we have found pretty much where we would see uh, that zero on the bottom by solving for those guys. And as a result, this, this overall entire function would be continuous everywhere except for three and negative two. So we end up then with x is good as long as it's between negative infinity, comma, negative two. Can't include negative two though, so we have a parenthesis around him. Negative two to positive three parenthesis around him as well because we can't be 3 and then 3 to infinity. Now so then again this is where we would see that continuous function. Now things would get a little bit more in depth if this were a piecewise function and as you guys can tell if you were to factor out this top something would cancel this x plus 2 would end up canceling even though that that cancels and we see that removable discontinuity, uh, th that's still a form of discontinuity. That's, I mean, it's even in the word itself, removable discontinuity. Um, but if this were like, for example, a piecewise function, uh, which is what AP a lot of times loves to throw at you guys, um, then potentially they would have to give you an A value that would also be defined there. All right, so for example, I think it comes out to be four fifths. If they made a piecewise function that was four fifths, at the specific at the specific value x equaling negative two, then it, this guy would no longer be uh, you know in play I guess as part of that discontinuity. But again, this is not a piecewise function. Example six is just a normal rational function. But it is important to kind of know how those piecewise interrelate to with continuity. So again, though, that is example six from our one point four set of notes.